we are going to reestablish trust between law enforcement and the public. And ultimately, I think that what we've had in the city that's been continuing to aggravate the problem is there's been a failure of leadership. Failure for leadership to come out and make the case that's what's best for the public and individual members of the public and the city at large is also what's best for the safety and well-being of our men and women in uniform. And so, for me, I would like to see a civilian oversight commission that has the ability to restore that trust and prevent, perhaps provide that leadership. I feel it's been absent coming from the mayor's office. I feel that a lot of what's happened in the mayor's office has kind of been tainted by this sense of it being political. Uh, I was here the night of May 5th when you lost control of the city council, and part of what happened happened right behind me when they placed Chief Eden five seats inside a row that was difficult to exit from. And when they started to feel a little threatened, Officer Romero came down and grabbed a woman and pulled her out of the road, who was on her way exiting the aisle anyway. And she waited three seconds, or if they had a little forethought about seating him in a better position to exit from, none of that would happen. And this officer is part of the mayor's internal circle. So I think there's a feeling among the public that these officers who perhaps need some new, new training or guidance on how to do the job differently, they're not accountable to anyone, and uh, the mayor's office is not offering that guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman, okay. so did I understand you correctly that you'd like to see the, the bill passed as it presently exists? In terms of my understanding of it, yeah, I, I would like to see the uh, Police Oversight Commission abolished and that we would build a new civilian oversight. Commission. I'm not clear on exactly the details of exactly the qualifications and responsibilities of the, of the members would be, but I would like to see that happen. You know, I would, I would mention you'd agree that, that it's sort of a conundrum of how you create a fully independent body when somebody up here, <laughs> up here or up there, has got to be involved in the creation of I, I do see that conflict and that difficulty, and I'd like to think that at least there might be some more confidence on the part of the public to know that these were civilians, and also the idea that perhaps this commission could um, be put together, this oversight committee could be put together with more guidance from a group of people like City Council rather than just being appointed by one individual, and that we would be able to open the process to many people to apply. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Scott Dickerson, and for the record, uh, this evening's uh, meeting is a special meeting, and when speakers are coming up to speak on the agenda, uh, it has to be germane to the issue that we are discussing, so it will have to be germane to this item. So go and proceed. Yes, well, hi. I uh, introduce myself. My name is Scott Dickerson. Um, I am an APD protester. I'm also consider myself to be a conservative, uh, libertarian Christian. I went to the same church as Lord Meeting for nine years. Um, I'm here to speak about the POC. I definitely think it should be abolished if its own members have no um, faith in it that they quit because they can't do anything, then it's obvious it doesn't work. Uh, as a citizen, to have faith in APD again, we need transparency. We need to be able to know there's an independent review committee that has access to all the information, all of the lapel footage, uncut. What happened? We just don't believe APD stories anymore. You can look at the the what happened with Armand Martin. Jane, um, Caleb James wrote an article that's on KLB.com right now saying that the neighbors that he interviewed that day said after one large big bang <coughs> APD told them that everybody, or that Armand Martin had been taken into custody. And he was shocked, quote unquote shocked, when he found out later that Armand Martin had been shot. These, what, what APD says happened was that they said that Armand Martin shot at police, but the neighbors would have heard it. They wouldn't have been shocked at all. This article totally goes against what we've been told by APD on what happened that day. He said one large thing, APD told us he is in custody, but later we found out that's not true. We're not getting the truth. Mary Hawks, her autopsy says for sure that Jeremy Deere died. You know, we need to have faith in APD against, and we don't. 
So hopefully the the new committee will have the transparency to create. Thank you. Madam Barbara? Thank you for having me, counselors. Um, I appreciate the wonderful work you're all doing. I mean, I can't say that enough, especially Judy Jones. I'd like to personally thank you, ma'am, for calling the protesters and they're actually disgusting. I completely agree with you. Um, I think they are completely disgusting for uh, practicing democracy. The part is for Inside the city. Yeah, uh, ma'am, sir, um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to that. Uh, and so, um, um, especially uh, women like um, the women's rights suffrage movement. I mean, how do they even ask for the right to vote for women, but yet you benefit from those same uh, privileges that your comrades have accrued for you? Thank you. Uh, police oversight, yeah, we definitely need to uh, restore faith, and I, and I think we need a true uh, citizen oversight, not, not whatever was created, because they came out publicly and said they had no real authority. Uh, Mr. Ken Sanchez, president of city council, agreed with them, but in the same breath wanted to fill the seats that were no longer uh, occupied by those who resigned. I, I don't get it. Um, I'm, maybe I'm not that smart. I'm sorry for that. Um, I, um, I, uh, I'm really sad for Nora and I because you know what Nora does? She tells us all the time to make sure we respect counsel, especially Ken Sanchez, because she believes in you. And uh, when, they brought, when they took her out in silence, you know, the world heard her, even though there were no words. They pulled her out and made her walk upstairs knowing she had a cane. They arrested her, and uh, she's been hurt badly, you know, because they put the cuffs on too tight or whatever for what, trying to talk to the mayor? I think we need more than police oversight. I think we need to get back to the basics. How about this? Don't shoot people in the back. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I don't think we need to spend a bunch of money on that. I don't know, call me crazy. I support APD, I'm an APD supporter, I believe in you, and I am community. The main, the bus stops at Mayor Barry for a fire mayor. Thank you. 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 Hello, President uh, Sanchez and the House here, thank you. I represent no one but myself here. Uh, I believe that uh, there should be a, a civilian, not police oversight. Uh, when we are accused of a crime, the police investigate us. When the police are accused of a crime, they investigate themselves. That is not an inequality, that's an inequality. Work in construction. In construction, could, uh, the builder would not inspect the building. Uh, a city inspector would come, insurance people would come, body people would come. Anybody but the builder himself was the one that signed off on the inspections. I believe that we should all uh, be treated equally under the law, and this inequality should uh, not continue. Uh, decent officers have nothing to fear. I believe that there should be no qualifications other than when we go to serve on juries, uh, they don't ask us, they just ask us to be decent citizens. So I believe anybody, if there is any type of uh, non-police oversight, Anybody and everybody should have the opportunity to serve on such an oversight because uh, there should be really no qualifications. Just as for juries, just you know, the same qualifications, no uh, political or whatever. Uh, so I believe that, again, we should all be judged equally. And uh, to investigate oneself, this is not an equality, this is an inequality. So uh, we, I do uh, hope that council will. Uh, come up with an equitable way of treating what's been going on in our police department. Thank you. Thank you. Dick Schein, followed by Andrew Lippin. Well, Mr. Schein. Good evening, uh, Councilors. Mr. President, City Councilors, my name is Richard Schein, and I'm a former commissioner of the Police Oversight Commission. Let me begin by commending all of you for unanimously adopting at your May 19th meeting Councilor Jones's amendment to the Benton Sanchez proposal that would immediately suspend the work of the POC. With Councilor Jones's amendment, if that proposal were to be enacted, it would very significantly expand the jurisdiction of the IRO. For the first time, the IRO will be able to independently investigate, not just monitor, all officer-involved shootings, even if there is no citizen's complaint. A similar amendment appears to be included in the current version, that is, 
floor substitute number two you just passed, the Gardunia Winter proposal, creating a new civilian police oversight agency. In fact, I propose that the new review officer should have the authority to independently investigate any alleged unlawful use of force, not just officers involved shootings, to include the use of tasers by APD officers, regardless of whether there is a citizen's complaint. However, the current version of Gardunia Winter proposal still has a number of serious defects. Just a few examples. One, the provisions dealing with the agency's authority to investigate are seriously flawed. Two, a cloak of secrecy which would shroud the investigation of citizen, citizen complaints. Three, the board would not be able to recommend discipline as opposed because it would be barred from reviewing individual citizen complaints. Four, the city council rather than the mayor would appoint a review officer whose loyalty would be divided so that neither the board nor the review officer would be truly independent. And five, the Garrity issue and the subpoena issue still need to be addressed. In my view, this proposed ordinance needs a lot more work before it's ready to be adopted by the city council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Benton. Councilor uh, Mr. Shine, um, so you feel that it's more independent if the mayor appoints the IRO? Oh, no, no. Uh, the con Mr. President, Councilor Benton, uh, I believe the, the earlier floor substitute number one was a better approach, and that is that the, the uh, agency, the board of the agency, should appoint the, uh, the, the new officer and should be uh, reappointed with the new officer and should be had supervisory, supervisory control over the new officer and, and be able to discipline the new officer. That's how you would get independence both of the review officer and the board. Well. The, the current system is the mayor appoints the review officer, and she's obviously dependent on him to get to have her job. I understood, but the, but the crux of the matter then becomes how is the board appointed? If the, if the board has this absolute authority to actually, based on what I'm hearing from you, direct, uh, hire, direct, and fire the IRO. Is that correct? The review officer, yes. So, so then the crux of the matter becomes. What is the process by which that the board is appointed? Oh, I, I agree. It's extremely important how the board is appointed. One of the problems with the current bill is each councillor appoints by district. Right. And I just I disagree with that provision. In fact, I have a, a substitute language that we're going to discuss a little bit later. But um, <clears throat> what about this, this proposal, which, which I've yet to get my mind around from the task force, which says, well, uh, the council will appoint five people. The council will appoint five appointers. Uh, how does that square with additional independence? My own personal view is that ta that particular task force recommendation did not make a lot of sense to me. I mean, the fact is the council would be choosing the committee that would be choosing the, the IRO. And, and, and the better approach, it seems to me, is to take the, the appointments of the, of the commissioners or the, the members of the board uh, so it's not connected to each district, but, but that there be certain uh, categories of peoples uh, who would be appointed by the council. That's an expertise. The fact is that this is a, a technical board. This is a technical uh, uh, endeavor involving constitutionality and use of force and a whole number of technical issues. And just like with the EPC, as you have appointed members of the EPC, you've appointed developers. You've appointed people who are familiar with development law. And that expertise is needed on the EPC. That kind of expertise is also needed on this board. A couple of prosecutors, ex-prosecutors, a couple of defense attorneys, someone experienced in, in personnel matters, if they're going to be recommending discipline. Mr. Chair and Mr. Shine, I, you know, we, we had some discussion about that with, uh, with Mr. Simonson, I believe, uh, from the ACLU. And, um, you know, there seems to be a pretty broad differences of opinion as to that, you know, whether, whether you have, people are just truly citizen well, overseers or are they ex subject matter experts? And then if, if, they're, if they're just people from the community, then we're hiring subject matter as experts, I would hope to advise so then that becomes a, you know, a budgetary matter, of course, of how robust we create, how robust an organization we create. 
but um, civilian oversight is, is the title, and of course, there's nothing to say that these subject matter experts are not civilians, and, and, and they're not at the same rights as any other civilian, but uh, the, the substitute that I have proposed is council can nominate people that does not specify their qualifications, although maybe that's something we should discuss. The council would nominate people, but not by district, and not by Isaac Benton appoint somebody, but rather I might suggest somebody to the council, and then we conduct a vote, and it would be a super majority vote uh, to approve a person to this very important board. Uh, anyway, that, just since we brought up that issue, I wanted to kind of clarify uh, one of the amendments that I was proposing, at least for discussion. Well, well I would point out, if I may, uh, Mr. President and Council Chairman, if, if, even if you had uh, uh, some expertise, not completely dominated by, the, by, by those lawyers, but some expertise, that is, Two people experienced in criminal defense, two people experienced in prosecution, which sort of balance the two, and, and plus a person experienced in personnel matters, you would still have a, a majority control of, of civilians by the civilians. I mean, the, 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 Mr. Wagner in his last hearing suggested that lawyers, if they're on there, will control the event. Well, they're going to have lawyers, lawyers involved in this anyway. The, law, the IRO has to be a lawyer, by, by, at least the way the bill's currently written. And, and the, uh, they'll hire the uh, agency will be able to hire outside counsel, so there are at least going to be two lawyers dealing with it. And the advantage of having other lawyers on the on the commission is to give it balance in terms of being members of the commission, not and so they're, they're not dependent upon the views of of the IRO or the outside counsel. Uh, but I, I agree fully that, the, the, that it's extremely important how the, how the agency members are appointed, the board members. And that's why it's so important that the new bill, the new version of the Substitute 2, uh, does provide that there would have to be a two-thirds majority to remove that the, a, a commissioner, and you don't have to have cause. That's just like when I was for, for 25 years a federal prosecutor, all my time, was, I was a, a, an accepted appointment, I could be removed without cause at any time. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, but, that but the fact is you have to have two-thirds of the majority of the of the commission of the city council to take do the removal, and that is going to, uh, so it's going to be clear 